Let's start at the very beginning by making a basic main menu. Alright, we found ourselves back in Unity once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be making a basic main menu over here. For this, there are two things that we're going to need. A main menu scene, as well as a other scene that you can just play. Now, in this case, I've taken the one from the five ways of movement over here that we're going to, well, start when we click the start game button. And then there's an empty main menu scene right here, which is the thing that we're going to populate with all sorts of things right now. So to create a main menu, what you want to do is in the hierarchy, you're going to right click, go to UI and and we're going to, first of all, make a panel. That is just going to be sort of a panel that's going to be in the background. I'm going to call this the main menu panel. And this is the first lesson, so to speak. And that is always name the things in the hierarchy as descriptive as possible. Sometimes the names can get quite long. However, I personally would say that it is better to have a little bit of a longer name, but you absolutely are for sure what this is, rather than just having like 12 different panels in here and you don't know which panel is which. Always recommended to make sure that the names of each of your game objects is very clear. So the canvas, for example, what you can do is you can click on this and once it's selected, you can press F2 to rename it and we're going to rename this to the main menu canvas here, for example. Then in the canvas, under the canvas component, we want to change the render mode from screen space to screen space camera and then drag the main camera right here into this field. And that's going to snap the panel right into the viewport of the camera. And if we look into the game, we can now see that the entire display is basically filled with this panel. We can then select the panel again, make sure that we are on the erect tool and then we can move this about and change the size over here. We can then also move it to the middle. It should snap to the middle. And we're just going to size this up a little bit, something like this. And if I now look into the game, you can see we now have a panel over here in the middle. And, and under the main camera, we can, for example, change the background color a little bit. So maybe we want to make this a little bit of a darker blue, just so that it looks a little bit nicer and a little bit different, and there we go. So that would be one example here for the main menu window over here. And now we're going to add certain things to it. We're first of all going to build the entire UI, and then the programming is gonna come in a moment. So under the panel, we're gonna right click UI, and we want it to add a text, text mesh pro. And if we click on this, a new window over here will appear. That's going to basically prompt you to import the TMP essentials. You're just going to click the import TMP essentials. Basically, in a high level overview, Text Mesh Pro is just going to be a great way of displaying text that is much sharper than any of the previously legacy text from Unity. And you can see we now have a new text over here. We're just going to push this up at the to the top over here. If I were to resize this and hold Alt, I can actually resize this in all directions. So something like this. And then on the right over here, when I have the text selected, you can see I can change the text. So for example, this is going to be the awesome start menu, something like this. I can then also change the alignment. So let's actually center this both horizontally and vertically. And then we can also change the font size to make this much bigger. And then maybe we also want to make this bold. There you go. And that is now going to be the awesome start menu. In game, it's going to look something like this. The T over here is just an indication that this is a Text Mesh Pro asset. In this case, if you don't want to see this in the game, you can turn off the gizmo and then you can see this is how it's going to look like properly. And then similarly here, you can also turn off all the gizmos and you can see it properly once in the scene view as well. But of course, this is a text. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to the main menu label over here. Just so that we know, this is going to be the label of the main menu. And one thing we want to do for this one is if I were to change the aspect ratio to, to something that is not the free aspect here in this case, would literally just be, you know, whatever free aspect we want. But you can see all of a sudden, oh no, we can basically change the position of the text over here by just making the screen bigger or smaller, which is definitely not something we want to do. So one thing we can do to get this to stay at the same position relative to the panel is when we have the menu label selected, under the Rect Transform right here, we can click on this and you can see there are an insane amount of anchor settings. And if you hold Shift or Alt, you can do all sorts of crazy things. Literally, the only thing we want to do is we want to hold Alt. We're going to snap it to the top of the panel over here. That's going to snap as well as put the pivot point to the, to the top as well. And then we could, for example, move this down a little bit. And now, all of a sudden, it's always going to stay on top because the top is now 
the anchor point where this is going to be anchored. It's a very good idea to do this to, well, but basically anchor it properly, then resizing is not going to be much of an issue. Of course, if we resize this way, then it's still going to be a little bit of an issue simply because of the fact that the panel is going to get smaller, but that's going to be okay for the time being. It's of course just a basic main menu so far. So in the panel, maybe we want three different buttons and we're going to add a button over here. The first one is going to be the start game button. And this is of course then the start game button text. And this is going to be start game. There you go. And let's resize this as well. Let's make sure to select the button. And then we can resize this once again with while holding alt over here. And let's just move this up a little bit. Let's say let's say something like this should probably suffice. And then in the text, we can size up the text over here. There we go. Something like that should probably be okay. Maybe we can actually go a little bit bigger. And then we can resize the text in here as well. There you go. Also make this bold as well. And there we go. Now we have one button. Let's actually add another button so we can just click on the game object, press Control D to duplicate it. Let's immediately rename this. This is going to be the credits button. And of course, conversely, this is going to be the credits button text. Let's move the credit button down over here, something like this. And this is going to say credits. And then we can duplicate this one more time. And this is going to be the options button. Of course, once again, changing the name over here. I know that this can be a little bit annoying sometimes. However, I'm telling you, out of personal experience, rename the elements in the hierarchy, even with, you know, simple things like this, because you are going to be amazed how easily you will forget what anything means. I am telling you, this is one of the best ideas. Then let's duplicate the options button one more time and let's move this out. This is going to be the quit button. It's going to be here at the bottom and maybe we want to make this a little bit smaller. So something like this maybe. And this is, of course, the quit button text. We're going to say quit game and making the font size a little bit smaller. Maybe we can make this a little bit smaller still. There we go. Something like that. And then here we also want to get the anchor to the bottom of the screen here. And then we should be fine. Now, when it comes to the functionality of each of the different buttons, the start game button and the quit game button are actually fairly easy and require a tiny bit of custom code. So in the scripts folder, we're going to right click create C sharp script. And we're going to call this the main menu here in this case. Let's open it and let's just add the two methods that we're going to need. So we neither need the start nor the update method. The only things we're going to need is a public void start game. This is going to be a custom method over here. And we're also going to need a public void quit game. There we go. So the start game is going to do the following. It's going to use scene manager. And if I autocomplete this with tab, you can see it automatically uses a particular namespace over here, namely the scene management namespace and the scene manager dot load scene. We can then give it a bunch of things, the index, we can give it the scene name. We can even give it the different parameters on loading a scene. Now, in this case, what we just want to do is we just want to say scene manager dot get active scene, get the build index of this, and then just add a one over this. So basically, we're just going to the next scene in the order. We're going to see the order of scenes in just a moment. But first of all, the quit game, well, quit game literally just is application that quit, you can see it actually already suggests this to us, and that is going to close the game. When you've built it, this does not work instead of the Unity editor, but that is going to be fine. I'm telling you, it's definitely going to work, and we can save this and go back to Unity, add the main menu script to the main menu canvas here in this case. That's where I want to add it. We're just going to drag it onto this. We can minimize the rest over here. That's all the custom code we're going to need here. Now we need to connect the pressing of the buttons to the calling of the different methods. So if we were to start this, right, what you can see is that I can click the buttons over here, but of course nothing happens. So what we need to do is we need to connect the clicking of the button with a call to a specific method. And to do this, for the example, in the start game button, under the button component over here, there's an on click. This is called a unity event. And basically, you can add method calls to these events. And what you do is you press the little plus over here, and then it's going to need an object. The object that we're going to put in there is the main menu canvas. And you can see now we can select a function. And the function we want to select is in the main menu class over here. And that is the start game. And now if I click the start game button, it's going to call the start game method in the main menu class. Absolutely freaking awesome. Similarly, in the quit button, what we can do is we can add a plus. Once again, drag in the canvas right here under the function, select main menu, and then the quit game method, and then it's going to quit the game. Let's save this and jump into the game over here. And you will see, so in the quit game, of course, nothing happens, as I've said, because we're in the editor. However, if I click start game, something is going to happen. Now, in this case, it is an error, but that's okay. At least something happened. And to fix the error over here, 
as I've previously mentioned, what is the order of scenes? Well, you want to go to file under build settings over here. A new window will appear and you can see you need to add the scenes in your build. And for this, we're going to first of all drag in the main menu right here. You can see this now has an index of zero and then the five ways of movement, which now has an index of one. We can close out of this, play this again. And if we were to now click the start game button, all of a sudden we are inside of our five ways of movement scene with everything in here, by the way, the player, which we can change the movement type again. So all sorts of craziness. And if we stop the game, we are back at the main menu. However, what about the credits and the options button? Well, there's a very easy way to do this, and that is to duplicate the main menu panel and then basically just they are then overlaid on top of each other and then you're just going to disable and enable certain panels depending on what you have clicked. So we're going to duplicate the main menu panel twice over here. The first one is going to be the credits panel and the second one is the options panel. There we go. We can then disable this by just clicking this little button over here and we can first of all focus on the credits panel. So let's also disable the main menu and now what we are seeing here is the credits panel. So this would be the credits label, right? And then we can then, for example, say this is going to be the credits. We honestly don't need any buttons except for the quit button, because of course we need a way to return to the main menu. You can rename this the return button over here, and this is going to be the return button text. So this is going to be the return. And then in the panel, maybe we want another label over here. So once again, I just clicked on this, press control D to duplicate it. And this is going to be the credits. And let's just move them about in the scene over here. So maybe the credits are going to be tutorial made by Kamjo. Oh, that's me. Let's go. And also many thanks to all viewers. Awesome. Let's size this a little bit differently. Maybe make a little bit more font size over here. Now we have a credits panel and to add the functionality to the return button, what do you want to do under the button once again? Instead of calling the quit game over here, we want to minus this so that the list is empty and we want to add two different things. The first one is the credits panel itself because that is the thing we want to disable now because we want to go from the credits panel to the main menu panel. So we want to go in here to the function game object and we want to set active to false, right? So no check mark right here. And for the main menu panel, we want to once again go to the game object set active and this one we want to set to true. Now the credits panel is done. We can disable it and we can go back to the main menu panel and do it in the opposite way, right? So if we were to go to the credits button over here, nothing added here. We once again want to add two things. We want to first of all disable the main menu. So we want to drag the main menu panel in here, go to game object, set active, making this false. And then for the credits, we want to drag that in here, game object, set active and set that to true. And similarly in the options, we want to add two things and that is the main menu panel, making this set active to false and then making the options panel game object set active to true. And now we can navigate to the credits and the options panel. Lastly, we just want to finish the options panel. Nothing really crazy going to happen here. There we go. So the options label is the awesome options, maybe something like that. And maybe we don't want any buttons over here, but maybe we want something else. So in the options panel, just for the sake of argument, let's just add a slider because that's the easiest to deal with right now. So we just add a slider over here, duplicate the options label, Let's just move this about right here, change the alignment a little bit. And maybe this is going to be the volume. So this is the volume label over here. Then we have the slider. This is the volume slider. Maybe the base value is 0.25. And then instead of the quit button, this is once again a return button over here. So we're going to return. And similarly to what we've seen before in the return button, we want to add two different calls to the on click over here. The first thing is the options menu game object set active to false. And then going back to the main menu over here, game object set the active to true. Now in this case, of course, the volume slider doesn't do anything. That is something that is a little bit more advanced to actually add some options. This is, of course, just a basic way of adding a main menu over here. And we can now disable the options panel, re-enable the main menu panel. And now we should be able to navigate through all of it. So if I go in here, click on the credits, you can see it changes to the credits. Let's actually turn off the gizmos here as well. So that is a little bit nicer to see. So you can see now this is the credits tutorial made by Kaumjo. Awesome. Many thanks to all the viewers. Thank you so much. We can return back to the awesome start menu and we can also go to the options, change the volume over here, return again, go back to the options. So you can see the volume has still remained at the position right there. You can quit the game, which doesn't work in the editor. And then we can start the game and we're back in our game and happy to, well, continue along over here. Absolutely awesome. And while the start menu is a really good start, what do you have to do at the end? Well, take a look at this video to see how you can export your game from Unity and actually play it outside of the editor. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.